our dopamine has been hijacked by chronic inflammation and instant rewards. Dopamine is extremely important for everyday function and it plays a much larger role in the body than just bonding, motivation, cognition, emotion, well-being and movement. Unfortunately, our environment today is very good at manipulating and hijacking our dopamine system. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that was originally synthesized in 1910, then later identified by Peter Holtz and then Herman Blasco, who discovered dopamine as the precursor for adrenaline and norepinephrine in the catecholamine pathway. It wasn't until 1952 when the short name dopamine was adopted. It's sometimes referred to as a prolactin inhibiting factor, prolactin inhibiting hormone or prolactostatin. Dopamine has been studied for a long time and it should no longer be called a neurotransmitter but instead a neuroimmunotransmitter. This is because not only commonly associated with the central nervous system and the effects such as increased motivation and muscle movement, but dopamine plays a huge role in many other systems, such as the immune system, tissues and organs, like the kidneys and adipose tissue, and the vascular system. Anything that creates an instant reward, especially without an effort, steals dopamine. For example, every time you look at a screen, the blue light tells our brain to release dopamine, and this acts on the same system as accomplishing a reward in our brain. We also get a dopamine release from likes on Facebook, retweets on Twitter, upvotes on Reddit, etc. This release of dopamine, specifically in the striatum, reinforces you to go back and play on Facebook again and again, and it's been studied as one possible root cause of addiction and depression. This can happen subconsciously. Having spontaneous fun, accomplishing goals and planning positive rewards can help with these addictive complications. Apart from instant rewards, chronic inflammation is depleting our brain's level of dopamine. For example, in those with chronic fatigue syndrome and sickness, dopamine becomes depleted as well as the cofactor and the rate limiting enzymes that create the catecholamines in this pathway. In Parkinson's disease, chronic inflammation and oxidative stress destroy the neurons that transport and create dopamine, and they create harmful byproducts, pro oxidants, instead of dopamine. Reducing the chronic inflammation and reducing the root cause, such as infections and poor environmental exposure, can help to fix this cause of low dopamine. Low activity of dopamine can be caused by addictions like drugs, pornography, alcohol, cannabis, cocaine. ADHD, aging, ALS and Alzheimer's disease. Anhedonia, bulimia, cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic infections. Chronic or extreme stress, depression, dwarfism, erectile dysfunction, leaky blood-brain barrier and leaky gut, low motivation, heavy metal toxicity like manganese, arsenic, mercury and cadmium, insulin resistance, mold, neuroinflammation, obesity and overeating, Parkinson's disease, prolactinoma, restless leg syndrome, slow reaction speed, Tourette's syndrome and traumatic brain injury. High activity of dopamine is associated with aggression, such as is seen in autism spectrum disorder, anorexia, bipolar, which can switch between high and low dopamine activity, mania and migraines, Huntington's disease, nausea, psychosis, PTSD and schizophrenia. Although high and low levels of dopamine are associated with some of these pathologies, addressing the dopamine receptor function and dysfunction might be equally important. Dopamine synthesis is extremely sensitive to inflammation. As a protective inhibitory neurotransmitter, the dopamine can directly reduce inflammation in the body and the brain, dependent on which receptor the dopamine is acting upon. Chronic infections like mold dysbiosis and viral 
and chronic oxidative stress use up the body's ability to produce the catecholamines by depleting the body of the rate-limiting enzymes and the antioxidants. This is one of the most important pathologies of reduced dopamine and it's seen in Parkinson's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia and sickness behaviour. Dopamine is very strong at protecting against stress. For example, dopamine can protect the heart from severe cold. Low dopamine is commonly seen in major depressive disorder and associated disorders like anhedonia. Dopamine can improve happiness and induce euphoria. For example, one of the ways that bright light and sunshine makes you happy is by its ability to increase dopamine in the brain. Dopamine also increases motivation and it can lower the perceived effort that it takes to achieve something. For example, patients that were given levodopa to boost the dopamine levels made more economic decisions and reported improved happiness. As stated before, chronic inflammation from pro-inflammatory cytokines reduces the ability for dopamine to be produced and this leads to laziness and unwillingness to execute tasks. This is very commonly seen in sickness behaviour where depletion of dopamine and increased inflammatory markers in the basal ganglia and the cerebrospinal fluid lead to malaise and reduced reward behaviour. For example, inflammation also in the putamen causes dopamine dysregulation and this is a major pathology of chronic fatigue syndrome. Dopamine can protect the brain in many neuroinflammatory disorders and it's well studied in its role in Parkinson's disease and traumatic brain injury. Dopamine's ability to inhibit muscle movement in Parkinson's disease is a byproduct of its major antioxidant neurotropic function on the substantia nigra and the striatum. Dopamine also reduces inflammation of the central nervous system by its ability to modulate the immune system via the vagus nerve. Dopamine can protect the brain during hypoxia or lack of oxygen. For example, after a traumatic brain injury, dopamine may be significantly depleted, reducing extraversion and preserving energy for repair mechanisms. Dopamine is responsible for activating the circadian rhythms. When dopamine signaling from the eye activates the suprachiasmatic nucleus, this helps to entrain the master circadian clock and motivational behaviours to get up in the morning. Insomnia is a common problem in Parkinson's disease. Dopamine is dependent on orexin receptors and adenosine receptors for sleep-wake activity. Dopamine can influence the perception of time. Increasing dopamine in the substantia nigra pars compacta is able to slow down the perception of time, while decreasing dopamine in this area does the opposite. Dopamine is a major player in the reward pathway and every time something good happens, dopamine is released in the brain. Reward deficiency syndrome can happen from low dopamine levels and it can cause people to seek quick dopamine enhancing rewards. Increased dopamine can help to prevent withdrawals and cravings for drugs and comfort foods. It can help with overeating, obesity, weight gain and sugar cravings. In obesity, dopamine can increase weight loss through enhanced perceived motivation reward and reduce binge eating, while low dopamine can contribute to lower levels of physical activity, leading to possible weight gain. Dopamine can also work directly on fat cells and suppress their expression to grow. This is a double-edged sword, as too much dopamine can contribute to not eating at all, like anorexia. Increasing dopamine can improve spatial attention in attention deficit disorder. Dopamine can increase brown fat, the fat cells with tons of mitochondria. When dopamine becomes oxidised via stress, it can cause mitochondrial dysfunction and cells to die and it plays a large role in the pathology of Parkinson's disease. Dopamine can increase synaptic plasticity. Dopamine induces neuroplasticity via signalling of the endocannabinoid system. Dopamine plays a role in the feelings of fear. Activation of dopamine 
in the nigro striatal pathway can help with fear extinction and can reduce trauma-related anxiety. Increased dopamine can also make you more optimistic. Dopamine can reduce approach avoidance and can improve confidence. Dopamine helps with social bonding and feelings of connectedness to others, like love. Oxytocin, the love hormone, works in conjunction with dopamine to strengthen relationships. It acts on reinforcing social behaviours. Higher dopamine levels are associated with higher social status. Dopamine enhances libido and it can increase sex drive. It can help with erectile dysfunction. In the digestive system, dopamine reduces gastrointestinal motility and it protects the intestinal mucosa. Dopamine can improve exercise performance and tolerance. In the eye, dopamine regulates the circadian rhythm and it keeps homeostasis of the eye, such as retina development, visual signaling and refractive development. Dopamine receptor stimulation from light can help to prevent the development of myopia. Dopamine might be beneficial for cancer as it can inhibit angiogenesis and promote cell death. It also increases the activity of T lymphocytes, myeloid derived suppressor cells, tumour associated macrophages and natural killer cells. Depending on which receptor the dopamine acts on, it can modulate blood pressure. In blood vessels, dopamine inhibits norepinephrine release and it acts as a vasodilator. In the kidneys, it increases sodium excretion and urine output. Increasing dopamine might help with diabetes. For example, cabergoline, a dopamine agonist, can lower the fasting blood glucose and HbA1c in patients with type 2 diabetes. Dopamine receptors in the pancreas reduce insulin secretion. Dopamine may play a role in physical pain, as lower dopamine levels decrease the threshold that you feel pain. For example, patients with Parkinson's disease tend to have abnormally heightened sensitivity to pain. Dopamine is important for the mother and the child during pregnancy. For example, infants of high dopamine mothers had better autonomic stability and less excitability. Low levels of dopamine during pregnancy might also contribute to postpartum depression. Low dopamine activity has also been implicated in infants with less exploratory behaviour. Dopamine is extremely important in the development stages of life. By affecting executive functions, dopamine dysregulation during development may contribute to autism spectrum disorder, seizures, motor problems, repetitive behaviours and impaired neurogenesis. Dopamine plays a role in smell and taste perception. For example, in patients with Parkinson's disease, the decreased ability to smell is common. Olfactory dysfunction might be an early biomarker for Parkinson's disease. Normal levels of dopamine can make you more creative and they can play a significant role in verbal fluency. For example, moderate levels of striatal dopamine benefit creative cognition by facilitating flexible processes. Moderate levels of prefrontal dopamine enable persistence-driven creativity. Dopamine may initiate and regulate dental repair by acting on stem cells. High levels of dopamine might lead to anorexic conditions. Dopaminergic supplements like amphetamines might make schizophrenia worse. Increases in dopamine enhances reward feedback, so it's important to do good habits while increasing dopamine or else it could cause an addiction. Too much dopamine can make you hypersexual and compulsive and impulsive. Dopamine in excess can cause mania and psychosis. Dopamine might contribute to headaches and migraines. Dopamine in the infralimbic cortex or the medial prefrontal cortex might reinstate fear and aversion, while dopamine activation in the amygdala might contribute to fear conditioning. Excessive amounts of dopamine might cause pregnancy loss, premature birth or increased chances of schizophrenia in the offspring. 
Dopamine receptors are found on the skin and in hair follicles, and they might play a role in inhibiting hair growth. Dopamine might be converted to dopamine beta hydroxylase into norepinephrine and adrenaline and increase blood pressure and oxidative stress. This is commonly seen in Parkinson's disease. Dopamine might also cause a vitamin B6 deficiency, so supplementing with it can help prevent that. Some natural ways to increase dopamine. You can use bright blue light or sunlight. Use the supplements butyrate, cordyceps mushroom, exercise and listen to music, or the herb for scolin, macuna pruins or the velvet bean, priming, which is a 15 minute version of visualized meditation. Have coffee, have tyrosine, have uridine monophosphate. You can achieve goals and have rewarding habits, like crossing off your checklist. You can be social and try bonding with others to increase your dopamine. Have a good circadian rhythm, sleep during the night and wake up when it's bright. Use cold water and cryotherapy. Live in an enriched environment. Exercise. Learn something new. Try massage therapy. Try meditation. Avoid masturbation. Spaceflight increases dopamine. Standing increases dopamine. Sunlight and chronic tanning. Touching, stroking, tickling and hugs and yoga all increase dopamine. Bananas, black tea, blueberries and broccoli sprouts can help. Caloric restriction increases dopamine and repairs the dopaminergic system. Carvacrol in thyme and oregano in lower doses helps to increase dopamine. Chocolate and cacao, coffee and fasting all increase dopamine. Green tea, a high salt diet, intermittent fasting, ketosis, royal jelly and spirulina can all increase dopamine. Sugar and unsaturated fats also increase dopamine. Some devices you can use are acupuncture and electroacupuncture, blue light and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. LLLT on the head increases dopamine neurons and survival against stress. An oxygen concentrator protects dopamine in the striatum. Transdermal cranial stimulation. UVB can be useful for activating tyrosinase to produce melanin and vagus nerve stimulation. Numerous hormones can affect your dopamine levels like endomorphin, estrogen and ghrelin. Growth hormone IGF-1, insulin, kynurenine and melatonin. Orexin, pregnenolone, somatostatin and testosterone. Turftestin and vitamin D. There's many supplements that can increase dopamine, like Alcar, Alpha-GPC, Alpha-Lipoic Acid, Angelica Root, Aronia Berries, Bacopa, which protects dopaminergic neurons and increases acetylcholine, Beta-Alanine, which significantly increases dopamine in the nucleus accumbens, Black Cohosh, Black Cumin Seed Oil and Broad Bean, Brown Algae, Butyrate, Caffeine, calcium, carnosine, cat's claw, catoaba, CDP choline, the chase berry and sustanch. Clary sage, cloves, coenzyme Q10, cordyceps and creatine. Curcumin, dan shen or red sage, the EGCG catechin, Eleutrococcus siberian ginseng, fish oil, specifically DHA, vitamin B9, for scolin, gallic acid, ginkgo biloba, ginseng, hesperidin, horny goatweed, and huprazine A. Inositol, jasmine, zhaozhuling, kava kava, lemongrass, licorice, and luteolin, maca, magnesium, marapuma, methionine, macuna pruins, and mulberry. N acetylcysteine and NADH, phenibut, phenylalanine, piperlongum, polygala, 
prickly nightshade, quercetin, resveratrol, and rhodiola, rosemary, schisandra, shilajit, skullcap, St. John's wort, taurine, teacrine, theanine, tyrosine, and uridine, vanilla, vitamin B6, walnut extract, yohimbine, and zinc. Clostridium increases dopamine in the gut lumen in germ-free mice. E. coli increases dopamine in the gut lumen in germ-free mice. Lactobacillus plantarium reduces anxiety by increasing serotonin and dopamine in the striatum, but not in the prefrontal cortex or the hippocampus. Lactobacillus raminus increases dopamine in the frontal cortex. A high saturated fat diet can significantly reduce dopamine signaling and functioning. Also eating a high fat diet during pregnancy can alter the dopamine receptor in the offspring. Brown rice might reverse some of the problems with a high fat diet on the dopamine system. A high tryptophan diet can reduce dopamine and a low iron diet can also affect dopamine. Dopamine levels reduce with age. Chronic inflammation also reduces dopamine levels. Chronic stress increases dopamine release to the point where it causes dopamine dysfunction. Insulin resistance and noise pollution at night also interfere with dopamine. Physical inactivity results from altered dopamine receptors rather than excess body weight, meaning you're not fat because you don't work out or you're lazy, but the dopamine dysfunction causes you to be lazy and to not work out. Sleep deprivation also affects dopamine. Chronically secreted cortisol can lead to a dopamine dysfunction. You can see my video on pregnenolone for this. Histamine H3 receptor agonists significantly decrease the affinity of the dopamine 2 receptor. Leptin inhibits dopamine neurons. Leptin resistance might cause a problem. Serotonin, not directly, and not a simple inverse correlation, but it affects the dopamine levels. Ashwagandha might reduce dopamine, but it protects the dopamine neurons and levels from stress. Branch chain amino acids, berberine and ginger. Magnesium increases adenosine activity. Magnolia is protective on the dopaminergic neurons. A vitamin E deficiency can affect your dopamine levels. Bifidobacterium longum normalized the dopamine receptor's neurotransmission after apomorphine, a dopamine agonist in models of schizophrenia. It's easy to become addicted to dopaminergics as it affects the reward system. To counteract this, create normal routines and pair dopaminergics with good habits. It may be possible to use some pathways to get ourselves out of a drug-induced dopamine addiction. Inhibiting CA-MK2 might be a very promising way to make dopaminergics less addictive. For example, in animal models, inhibiting this has been shown to have a protective effect against nicotine and cocaine dependence. One way to stop the overexcitation of dopaminergics is by inhibiting the mTOR activation. Some mTOR inhibitors are alpha lipoic acid, curcumin and resveratrol. Inhibiting RHO kinase or ROC might be able to promote the goal seeking action of dopamine and neuroplasticity without creating the addictive habits. Some ROC inhibitors are resveratrol and sulforaphane. Dopamine has a hard time crossing the blood brain barrier. There's a few ways to make dopamine. L-phenylalanine supplementation can convert to L-tyrosine and this can convert to L-dopa and increase your dopamine. Dopamine receptors have a circadian rhythm and they change with the seasons. As a regulatory process, you have twice the amount of dopamine receptors during the winter than the summer. Dopamine receptors are characterized into two groups. D1 receptors, which are stimulatory on cyclic AMP 
or CAMP, and D2 receptors, which are inhibitory on CAMP. It's important to note that dopamine activation on receptors has separate functions. For example, some will increase inflammation, while others will decrease it. For example, DRD1 and DRD2 are coupled to anti-inflammatory mechanisms, thereby dampening the inflammation, while the DRD3 and DRD5 have been found consistently to promote inflammation. To book a consultation or to learn about herbs, supplements and natural treatments, check out my website.